Okay, so let's look at the specific reaction with dichromate. Now you may recall sodium dichromate and potassium dichromate from redox chemistry. Uh, the dichromate anion is a strong oxidizing agent. So I've written out sodium dichromate and potassium dichromate here. The actual dichromate anion that does the oxidizing is this. Uh, and it is a strong oxidizing agent. So if something is an oxidizing agent, it causes another species to be oxidized. And for this to happen, the oxidizing agent must itself be reduced. So in the case of dichromate, it's the chromium atom that is reduced. And uh, this here is the half reaction for the reduction of dichromate. There are several important things to notice here. Firstly, uh, here are the electrons that are accepted by the dichromate. So remember, it's an oxidizing reagent. It's oxidizing something else. It must itself be reduced. If something is reduced, it gains electrons. So those six electrons are gained by the chromium. So chromium in dichromate has an oxidation state of plus six. So we've got oxygen, seven oxygens, minus two each. So that's a total of minus 14. Overall, our iron has a charge of minus two. So I need plus 12 from the chromiums to balance it out. So that each one is plus six. Our chromium has a an oxidation state of plus six. But on the other side, we've got chromium three plus, it has an oxidation state of plus three. So the chromium is going from plus six to plus three. So it is being reduced. Uh, the second thing is that this half reaction cannot occur without hydrogen ions. Uh, this means that if you want to oxidize an organic molecule with dichromate, you need to add acid. Otherwise the dichromate uh, reduction half reaction cannot happen. And if the reduction half reaction can't happen, then the oxidation can't either. Um, thirdly, the dichromate ion is a yellow-orange colour. And in contrast, the chromium ion is a greenish colour, sort of blue-green. And this colour change, therefore, gives you a good indicator of whether your reaction has occurred. And this has made the dichromate oxidation um, a really useful reaction in several contexts, as you'll see in a second. So let's see how this works with an actual organic molecule. So we're going to take ethanol as an example. Um, ethanol is a primary alcohol, and as we said before, when a primary alcohol is oxidised, it turns first into an aldehyde and then into a carboxylic acid. So this is what the half reaction for the oxidation would look like. So here's the reduction half reaction, and this is the oxidation. In this particular half reaction, we're assuming that it goes all the way to the carboxylic acid in one step. Okay, we're emitting the aldehyde from this. But you could equally write a half reaction for the alcohol to the aldehyde and then the aldehyde to the acid. We're just assuming that it goes all in one go. Note that you won't be tested on redox half reactions. Um, this is just trying to wake up some of the stuff that you learnt last year, show you how it all fits together. Um, showing you the nuts and bolts, if you like, um, so that you can see how these two branches of chemistry tie in with one another. Uh, now, to find the complete reaction, as opposed to just the half reactions, we add the two half reactions together. I won't go through the process, but remember that you need to make the numbers of electrons in the oxidation and reduction equal, and then you add the two half reactions together and cancel out anything that's on both sides. When you've done that, you get this complete reaction here. Now we're missing some spectator ions from this equation. Obviously the dichromate must have had either sodium or potassium ions associated with it, but they don't take part in the reaction, so we can leave them out. Similarly, um, the hydrogen ions must have been part of an acid, but we're not showing the counter ion of the acid, whether it was chloride from hydrochloric acid or sulfate from sulfuric acid. We don't need it in this reaction. Um, so just to go over the complete reaction, we've got ethanol, it reacts with dichromate in the presence of acid. And the result, if it goes all the way to the carboxylic acid, is ethanoic acid. And chromium ions, which are green, and some water is produced. All right, now, why is this reaction so useful? Well, from a chemist's point of view, it's a very convenient way of producing aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. But from the point of view of the police, it's the reaction in the original breathalyzer tests. Ethanol is, of course, the alcohol in wine, beer, and spirits. When you've drunk a lot, there's a certain amount of ethanol in your breath. 
in the original breathalyzer tests, acidified uh, crystals of dichromate were stuck onto silica gel particles. And when a driver breathed into the tube, any alcohol in the breath would cause a color change um, when the dichromate reacted with ethanol. So these pictures here are showing a balloon that's filled with ethanol, ethanol vapor. And they squeeze the ethanol vapor into the test tube. And you can see that here, the yellow-orange dichromate crystals have been reduced to the green chromium-3 ions, which indicates that uh, ethanol was present. And uh, this is just the same reaction that we had on the previous page, the oxidation of ethanol by dichromate. Of course, this works for other alcohols as well, as we've said. This is a, a general class of reactions. Um, but this particular breathalyzer test was obviously for the presence of ethanol.